Welcome to KSO Today, K-State Online's daily podcast. This is the Tuesday edition. I'm Derek Young. It is March 10th, 2020, 2020, as some call it, as I always say. Hope you enjoyed that intro music. That is from Matt Hall's favorite wrestler. So, of course, he would pick that. Uh, let's dig right in. Let's talk about a little Big 12 basketball at this point. You'll see uh, the Big 12 tournament take place in the Sprint Center in Kansas City over the next handful of days. It starts tomorrow night, Wednesday evening, as Kansas State will play the TCU Horn Frogs. Unfortunately, TCU, not one of the three teams that K-State beat this season. They did beat West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Iowa State, the most recent being against the Cyclones on Senior Day in Manhattan inside Bramlage Coliseum behind a great outing from Xavier Sneed, who I believe scored 26 points alone in the first half and at 31 for the game in his final game in a Kansas State jersey inside Bramlage. Coliseum. Also, good, good last outing for Pearson McAtee got the start, and of course poured in some of production more than any other game this year. Now they do play TCU. Desmond Bain's been red hot lately, and they'll have to, you know, defend him and keep him under, you know, contain him and keep him under control in, in the Sprint Center if they want to get past the first round. And if they do, the Baylor Bears will be waiting for them. Baylor, of course was number one in the country for over a month this season and looked primed to at least win a share of the Big 12 regular season crown, kind of like K-State did a season ago that did not come to fruition for them after losing at home to KU and losing again after that. They gave the Kansas Jayhawks the Big 12 title outright and hopefully not the start of another streak in Lawrence. Uh, we'll, we'll steer clear of Big 12 basketball for the most part now and move on to other topics, mostly football recruiting. Uh, in case you haven't heard or haven't been privy to it, we will be um, conducting some more video interviews of football recruits in the Kansas City Metro tomorrow. Um, uh, it'll be on Wednesday. We'll, we'll be at Gardner Edgerton High School, certainly, mo- and most likely, uh, to catch, you know, and talk and chat with commit Devontae Pritchard. Maybe get into what position he thinks he will play in Manhattan, whether it be linebacker or safety. He was one of the first commits of the class, of course. And while we're at Gardner Entertain, it'll probably be a great opportunity as well to uh, convene and discuss and have good interviews as well with signing Taylor Warner and, of course, um, outstanding target Austin Weiner, who is transferred into the school from from Georgia and is the son of former Wildcat Todd Weiner. Kansas State's already offered, clearly interested in the future offensive tackle, most likely offensive tackle, I guess, tight end and defensive end probably shouldn't be totally dismissed just yet, but offensive tackle is probably the most likely outcome when it comes to Austin Weiner. Now, mostly what we'll talk about the rest of this podcast, daily podcast, of course, in these 10 minutes will be upcoming visitors. March and April will be a big time for Kansas State. Um, they'll kind of put the, whether it is the beginning touches, you know, uh, the finishing touches on, on a few recruitments, of course, when they have a handful of guys that they've already offered coming to campus in March and April, and there'll also be some that come to campus and get offered on campus. But we are privy to some information of, of who will be there already. Uh, the one name we'll probably steer clear of is a prospect committed elsewhere. We'll leave that as premium information. There is a program, a prospect committed to an SEC program that will be uh, visiting Kansas State in the very new, near future. When I say very near future, it could be as early as this week. Um, so if you're not a premium member and you're considering it, that that's one of the pieces of information that will probably bring out the value in your subscription if you choose to do so. Uh, another thing to touch on is they did have Jackson, Missouri, offensive of tackle Connor Tolson scheduled for a visit to Manhattan. I think it was going to happen on March 20th. Um, he had just shared with us some of his favorites being Kansas State, Missouri, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Ole Miss. Um, you know, had a great offer list, and, and it was probably just beginning to you know blossom and beginning to grow. A really pretty looking off of the tackle, long, six foot six, six foot seven. But this past weekend on a junior day, he in Columbia, he did commit to 
Coach Drinkwood's in Missouri, so I would imagine that one's off in terms of a visit to Manhattan, at least at this point. Although, you never know, of course, what it's going to tell you later on. Tolson is a, a really good player, and Kansas State really wanted to have him. But they missed on him. There will be other misses, too. That doesn't mean that they're not recruiting well. That doesn't mean that Connor Riley is not recruiting well. He's turned heads in, in Kansas City and St. Louis repeatedly in his short tenure so far in Manhattan, whether it be an offensive line or otherwise. So um, that's not really anything to start to panic over, in my opinion. In fact, if you ask me about the recording now compared to what it was last year, they're, they're making the necessary progress, the considerable progress that we foresaw when they were hired. They're eons and eons ahead of where they were last year at this stage, and, and they're certainly competing for a different caliber of recruit than they were last year. The, there's, the caliber of recruit last year would kind of dismiss Kansas, the notion of Kansas State or, or at least not pay attention to them or, or give them as much the light, time of day as they compared to right now where they are. They're, com, they're competing with kids. They're competing with kids that have Auburn offers, Alabama offers, their, their Oklahoma offers, you know, and the rest, most of the Big 12. So I, I, their, their recruiting profile, their name recognition, school recognition is – is on a platform right now higher than at any point during the existence of KSO. So if you're going to panic over one guy, I, I would I would pay attention and, and keep in mindful of that because I'm not just blowing steam. You can definitely sense that when they are chasing some recruits that they are and in competition with some of the recruits that they are. And you, you can get a lot of that inside information and how those things are playing out by being a member on K-State Online and you know subscribe so we'll get into some of these visits that are definitely happening uh safety bro bo Fryler, he's out of colorado springs colorado not rated yet on rivals he will be probably in the near future multiple power five offer kid again bo Fryler. he's coming to kansas state on a visit in the near future during the month of march probably someone to know another defensive back from colorado this one more of a corner we actually saw him when we Made the trip to Boulder and Denver at his Miles purchase from Cherry Creek High School. Don't know yet whether his two teammates, Arn Walker and Gunnar Helm, will be with. We do know that Purchase will be visiting Kansas State in March, and they really like him. He has so far visits to K or offers from K State and KU. I think he'll probably visit both schools. A lot, of, a lot of kids are doing that, just going on a trip, seeing K State and KU back to back days. Um, but Purchase. Someone that Kansas State really likes. A little surprised that he only has two offers right now. Really like his film. Liked what I saw in person. Good kid. Um, Kansas State would be in a good spot if they could turn his head enough to eventually land him. Now, we talked about tight end Gunnar Helm. Going to be a little bit tougher. Don't know if he's visiting with purchase. Another tight end to keep in mind, probably on the same level as Helm, of where they are rated by K-State at least, is Ryan Hurstcamp from St. Louis area. I think he goes to Washington High School in Washington, Missouri. He'll be visiting this month. Um, that'll be a pretty monumental visit as well uh, for K-State in terms. They really want to get a you know a fluid move or a tight end. He would he would fit that bill. Also, another person with a really good offer list, of course. Speaking of a good offer list, uh, Brody Brick, and I am a wide receiver from Ankeny, Iowa. I think he'll visit K-State this month with with a few of his teammates, of course. Um, K-State familiar with the state of Iowa because of their. Coaches Chris Klein and Courtney Messingham coming from that area, that territory. They know it well. We'll have Brody Brecht on campus. He is a really high-profile recruit. Um, going to be tough to land. I foresee him right now kind of leaning towards Iowa. Kind of shared that in other places, but we'll see if they can turn his head. That visit will, will tell us which way it'll go from that point. If it's a really good visit, then maybe K-State has a shot. Um, but most likely we're looking at Iowa appearing to be a slam dunk for choice for him at this point. And what could be a slam dunk for K-State, Braden Wood of the Boulder area will be on campus this month, of course, a defensive lineman that K-State really likes. A lot of people really like. He's got, I think, uh, double-digit Power 5 offers now. And then Keegan Johnson would be the last one to kind of touch on in terms of future visits, too, as well. Uh, wide receiver from the Omaha, Lincoln area, Bellevue West High School, I believe. Don't have that in front of me. I know he's... There's Bellevue. Um, 
father was a Cornhusker, but I, K-State's really making a dent in that recruitment. And as you know, it's public information. He put it out there, a top three, K-State, Nebraska, and Iowa. I think he'll visit all three again, but I wouldn't dismiss K-State's chances at this point. Jason Ray's done a good job. Connor Riley's done a good job. Courtney Messingham's done a good job. Chris Clyden's done a good job. They've really prioritized him along with Jalen Nolan, another receiver. Um, th- that one from Kansas City, Missouri, Park Hill High School. Uh, I imagine Jalen Nolan will probably be on campus for a spring football practice at some point. Don't know if that's um, planned at this point yet. And I know, actually a visit, a second visit from a 2023 prospect. They've already all heard Jackson Howard. I think he is, I want to say, related to Phoenix Sproles, who played in North Dakota State. Obviously, Phoenix played for Chris Kleiman, was recruited by Chris Kleiman and that staff up in Fargo. And so, because that also related to Darren Sproles, so 2023 tight end Jackson Howard will be a big time prospect and target for K State. Still in the 2023 class, so he's still a high school freshman at this point. He's from Robbinsdale, Minnesota, I believe. Um, just took a second visit to K-State. They're going to be prominent as recruitment, but he's going to be a major, major recruit. And then Caden Proctor, another 2023 prospect, current high school freshman. He's from the state of Iowa. I think it's two or three Power 5 offers already. He's going to visit Kansas State this month. That's another one to note. Uh, we're a little over 10 minutes. I'll probably wrap this up now, but I hope you kind of like that run-through of recruiting. Um, I think I missed Jaden Bray, actually, a receiver from Norman, Oklahoma, that K-State has offered. So is KU, so is Oklahoma State. Will be a Big 12 battle. He'll be on campus, I want to say in March, but it might be April as well. So, uh, But yeah, good recruiting rundown. Uh, we talk about visits that have already been scheduled. The, the next round of visits that we may unlock or, or uh, I guess discover, we'll, we'll probably keep it behind the premium paywall. I just wanted to throw that out there to kind of show you the kind of information and value that your subscription will typically have. I hope you've been listening to KSO today and enjoyed it. I'm Derek Young, and as always at K-State Online, we would like you to tell your friends.